Hello, welcome to our online service this week. My name is Debbie Pang and I'm Associate Priest at St Mary's Chalcombe and St Stephen's Lansdowne. It's wonderful to be able to welcome you into my home as we come and worship together. Today is that special day of Mothering Sunday, as it's many joys and for some um, we're aware that it's quite a painful time. There will be more mention of that in my sermon later. This is an informal service and there is no liturgy. The opening prayer and the readings are in the description below if you are able to access those. <clears throat> um, but it's good to just be together uh, wherever we are, <clears throat> whatever's going on in our lives and just worship together. We'll begin in a moment with an open prayer that uh, I love to use. It's written in the first person and do make it your own. Let's just pause and let our minds and our bodies catch up with one another and then we'll pray. Loving God, beloved one, let me be aware of you with me and within me. Let me attend to each part of my body, all that's well and all that's poorly. Help me to let go of all in my life that lies in shadow. What I've done, what I've said, what I've thought. All that's not helpful that dishonours and mars your image in me. Have mercy on me. <clears throat> and let me trust your presence as I listen. Let me not be distracted by the clamour of every thought, but let my heart be still, my mind unlearned, my face unmasked. Let me not be afraid of all I know I cannot be, but let me trust that I am enough, that just to be here is enough, just as I am, and to trust that you look upon me, my beloved, with eyes that see, with eyes that love, for you are love itself. Amen. Our first reading today comes from the book of Exodus, uh, chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a fine baby, she hid him for three months. When she could hide him no longer, she put the child, <clears throat> she got a pap papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bitumen and pitch. And she put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe to the river. While her attendants walked beside the river, she saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrew children, she said. And his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get you a nurse from the Hebrew woman to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child and nurse it for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter and she took him as her son. 
she named him Moses because she said, I drew him out of the water. Our second reading, our gospel reading, comes from a book of John chapter 19, beginning at verse 25. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took him into his own home. I wonder if someone close to you has ever given you something that you've treasured. Quite a few years ago now, uh, I saw a card which amused me and I was with my daughters at the time and uh, pointed it out to them. One of them uh, later bought it and gave it to me. It was quite a humorous card uh, and it went something along the lines of, Dear child, the bathroom door is closed. Please don't stand here and talk, whine or ask questions. Wait until I get out. Yes, the door is locked. I want it that way. It's not broken and I'm not trapped. I know I've left it unlocked and even at times open since you were born because I was afraid some horrible tragedy might occur while I was in here. But it's been 10 years and I want some privacy. Don't ask me how long I will be. I'll come out when I'm done. Don't bring the phone to the bathroom door. Don't stick your little fingers under the door and wiggle them. It was amusing when you were two. Please don't slide Lego or pennies or little notes under the door. If you followed me down the hall talking and are still talking as, as you face this door closed before you, please turn around and walk away and wait for me in another room. I'll be glad to listen to you when I'm done. And yes, I still love you, Mum. My girls were at that sort of age of top of primary school, uh, early teens uh, at that time. And that card just resonated so much with me. And I kept it for years. My daughters are now in their sort of late twenties and, and it recently got thrown out because those memories you know, have faded. But of course, if you're a hoarder like me, you'll know that as soon as you've turned, uh, you know, thrown something out, that's when you really want it. And uh, I was looking at, for it for this sermon today. But it just remind, it just remembering those words, I found something similar in another book. Uh, it just brought me back to some of those memories of early child, uh, of early motherhood, and the challenges uh, which we often so easily forget, as well as the delights which hopefully we remember. And today is a mothering Sunday or Mother's Day, according to most of the cards in the card shop. They sound the same, but uh, what's that phrase? Uh, same, same, but different. Mothering Sunday yeah, is a Christian idea. I'm not sure if festival is quite the right word to describe it, but uh, it goes back to the times when people uh, very often worked in service in the big house, and um, Mothering Sunday was a, a, a Sunday when they could go home before Easter uh, to their family, to their mother church and worship with their family. It's a, a reminder, a celebration of the mothering um, side of our faith, the nurturing 
um, side of, of church and Christian life. Reminder of the beautiful mothering qualities of God. So often God is portrayed and, and talked about in, as, as being a powerful judgmental father figure. But he also, I say he, that's the co I, I, common term I tend to use for God and throughout scripture is used in, in the masculine. But actually there are so many maternal qualities in God that nurturing, that giving of life, the unconditional love, life bearing, life giving, nurturing, all qualities of God that would more readily associate with a mother. Of course, there's the caring and the consoling, that unconditional love that we, that mothers are all so good at, that we know is in God when we need him. Mother's Day, by contrast, started in the early 20th century in America. It's been widely promoted by cards and gift shops, and we use gift shops now, and celebrates our mothers. Now, as a mum myself, it's so good to have a day when all that unsung hard work, uh, that even today with fathers taking a much bigger role in childcare, that all that unsung hard work is recognised and celebrated. I don't know that uh, about you, but in your experience uh, of family life, but it's certainly in mine, you know, mum is often the butt of the jokes. Uh, in good and natured way, of course, but it's so nice to have one day uh, when all that sort of reverses and uh, <clears throat> we're appreciated for all the hard work that we do. But Mother's Day can also, as I alluded to at the very beginning, can be a painful day for so many. For women who would love to have been mothers, but couldn't. For mothers who are estranged from or have lost children and children who've lost mothers. Mothers and children with broken or damaged relationships, to name but a few. That urge uh, within so many women to be a mother, to uh, have a child, to bring forward a uh, new life is so powerful. And it has to be for a woman to risk uh, giving up her life in the danger of childbirth. Thankfully, in our culture uh, and, and with modern medicine, to lose your life uh, in childbirth is rare. But sadly, it still does happen. And in many other parts of the world, far more so than in, in the developed countries. Childbirth is a dangerous time. And so those emotions have to be so strong. And then the, the, those strong emotions to care for the vulnerable child they, and that mother-child bond, which generally is so strong, there's so much pain when that is hurt and broken. You know, as a, a farmer's wife, I see these things in the animal kingdom. Uh, I know that a cow with a calf uh, at foot is equally as dangerous and unpredictable as any bull ever can be. The urge to protect her vulnerable offspring is so strong in a cow um, and even if she can normally be really quiet and placid and docile, with a calf to protect uh, she can become very aggressive um, and, and not let go. You know that the, a cow protecting her calf is uh, something to be avoided at all costs. You know, women can be similarly protective over their children, hopefully not to the point of aggression in the same way. But if a mother is provoked enough, then maybe. And I wonder if Moses' mother found that that maternal instinct that, that gave her the strength and the courage to be creative, 
in trying to protect her baby son in the face of danger. She was living in Egypt at the time. Her people, the Israelites, the descendants of a refugee family who'd come to Egypt some 400 years earlier uh, during the famine in their land, the family of Jacob, also known as Israel, the father, one of the patriarchs of the faith. Um, and now they're in Egypt and they have been for some time, they've been very successful and the Egyptians are now feeling threatened by them. And Pharaoh has decreed that baby boys will be killed at birth. Now the Israelite midwives were a little uh, more canny and uh, they wouldn't kill the babies and said simply that Hebrew mothers gave birth far too quickly and easily before they even got there, so they couldn't smother the child at birth. <clears throat> but still there was that decree that baby boys should be killed. And it's into that situation that Moses is born. And here we have just an ordinary mother who must, at the birth of, of her son, have been so elated at the precious gift of life. The love that almost inevitably uh, comes with each child, that's so intense. And then to realise that it's a baby boy and all the danger and the probable heartbreak. And how is she going to manage? How is she going to preserve this precious life? I wonder what she thought as she prepared the basket. I wonder if other women were doing the same thing, whether the idea was hers or she'd copied it. As she wove the papyrus, which is a common reed-like plant there, weaving in both the hopes and her fears into that basket before tarring and pitching it to make it watertight. Perhaps trusting, hoping beyond all hope in God, that somehow God would hold her child, would protect her precious son. I doubt very much that she could have predicted the way that her precious son would be rescued. That the daughter of the very man who was trying to kill him would allow her maternal instincts to come to the fore. And even though she knew that this was a child of people that were her father thought were the enemy, her maternal instincts were to protect and, and protect that little vulnerable baby. The quick thinking of Moses' sister too in offering his mother uh, to nurse the child. Not that the Pharaoh's uh, daughter ever knew that it was the child's mother, they, she may have guessed. But I doubt very much that Moses' mother could have even dreamed of such protection for her child, let alone be to be paid for nursing her child. Knowing too that though her child was vulnerable, Growing up with the Hebrew children, he would be protected, he would be educated, he would be well fed uh, in the house of Pharaoh by Pharaoh's daughter. It was dreams that she would never even have anticipated for her son. And the story of Moses and his mother ends well. The story of Jesus' mother is much more challenging. She faces every mother's worst nightmare of seeing their own child die, let alone be unjustly uh, convicted and uh, caused to die such a, an agonising public death. Her love for her son, though, even though Virtually everyone else deserted him in that worry for their own lives. 
her love meant she was still with him, even as he hung on the cross. Determined to be there in any way she could till the very end. Yet Jesus in his humanity and in his divinity, in his hour of great anguish and pain, still cares for Mary, still looking out for her. Mary appears to be widowed at that time and Jesus as the elder son would have been responsible for her. Despite everything that's going on for him, his concern is still for her. It's as he sees his disciple John with her, that he puts her into a new family where she will be loved and cared for in the same way. You know, whether you are a mother or not, male or female, old or young, life is full of ups and downs. Some big, some small, but they're all woven together into our lives and all part, make up part of who we are. God, our ultimate mother, source of all unconditional love, as well as as father that we most commonly know him, holds us in, in all our uh, trials, tribulations, joys and, and blessings. He holds us as he held Mo Moses in that basket, as he held his son, Jesus, on the cross. Wherever you are, whatever season of life you are in, may you know God's love for you, his, his her work in all your life. May you know the blessing of God. Amen. And time for some prayer. And apologies for the dogs barking in the background. So as we come to pray, let's pray to our loving Mother and Father God. As children in one family. We thank you, loving God, for giving us one another to enjoy. To laugh and cry with. To learn to live with. May even our conflicts and arguments be used in helping us to grow in your love. We thank you for showing us the way to love and giving us opportunities to give. For learning to take second place, to accept people as they are, to forgive them when they annoy us and look for their needs before our own. Thank you, loving God, for the world we live in, for the colours and shapes, the sounds and textures, the flowers blooming, the birds singing. Thank you for giving us minds and emotions and help us to have reverence for the whole of creation. We thank you, loving God, for comfort and sympathy, for reassurance and practical caring, especially when we're ill or sad. Make us all more aware of the needs of those around us. Let our loving show in action. Thank you, loving God, for your promise to be with us always and not just until we die. We remember with affection those of our parents who loved us into existence and now live in eternity. Gather up into your loving arms those who have recently died. Comfort all whose memories make them aware of loss today. 
remembering to those parents who had lost children. Thank you, loving God, for giving us space and support, guidance and forgiveness, challenge and reassurance. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we pray together with confidence as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And the blessing. May the father and mother from whom every family in earth and heaven receives its name, strengthen you with their spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, and that knowing their love, broad and long, deep and high, beyond all knowledge, you may be filled with all the fullness of God. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you and those you love, and those with no one to love, this day and always. Amen.